Hello again music fans, I am back here for another Metal Genre Spotlight video. This time for the most, uh, you know, uh, powerful one of all, that would be Power Metal. Alright, a uh, complete favorite of mine, and if you've seen at least any, at least one or two of my videos here on the channel, you know that's for, that's for sure, I mean, I just love Power Metal. And, um, you know, it was... Uh, Pretty hard making this list, but I think I got a really good bunch here. Some um, usual, you know, the usual suspects, uh, some of them. Some uh, rarities, you know, and uh, some surprises right there. But before I get into it, you know, I think it, I want to talk about where it all began. Which I believe is here. Right here with Rainbow Rising. With a Dio. You know, his vocals, his... Uh, uh, lyrical imagery, uh, Richie Blackmore's um, uh, very classical inspired uh, guitar playing, you know, I believe this is really the influences all of the the power metal genre, even though this itself may not be a heavy metal album, you know, it's certainly more on the hard rock side, you know, but it certainly did influence that entire uh, heavy metal in general and uh, power metal in particular. As well as, you know, to a lesser degree maybe, uh, Led Zeppelin and uh, the song, Immigrant Song, you know, with its tales of, of uh, Vikings invading the England's shores. You know, that that uh, song, uh, Immigrant Song, very much tells a story. You know, Robert Plant was really into that the historical stuff back then at least. All right. So those two albums, but of course much more so here, is what started uh, power metal in my, my opinion and what gave it you know it's um you know when it really just came together was here sabotage the hall of the mountain king i mean just let's get it straight here look at that cover you cannot get any more power metal than that okay fantastic album by a fantastic band who not only pioneered a uh, power metal but also symphonic metal, you know, in their uh, later albums, and then again, then later still, with the Trans-Siberian Trans Orchestra. Okay, so, fantastic album here. Here they are on the back. Great vocals also. That, just, just for that song, even though the, the rest of the album is fantastic. Okay, now let's start it here with the, with the CDs, and... Uh, I cannot not include this band, and it has to be this album. Blind Guardian, right here. Imagination from the other side. Front to back, absolute stellar material, completely classic. I mean, every single song. I'm Alive, Past and Future Secret, you know, Morning of a Morning Hall. It has that feeling of, of um, magic, mystery. You know, epicness. Absolutely love that album. And of course, also from the heavy hitters in power metal, Stradivarius. Here we have Infinite. Hunting High and Low. Is there any more uplifting song than that? You know, that's one of the characteristics of, of power metal in that it, it can sometimes be doomy, but it also has a very positive, uplifting vibe, which I really like. Okay, Stradivarius. Uh, Infinite, Millennium, Mother Gaia, Phoenix. This is just classic stuff. With Halloween, I could have picked any of their early stuff, you know, especially their their debut, uh, Walls of Jericho. But I'm going with with their latest, which is self titled Halloween, because I just cannot stop listening to this ever since I got it. Absolutely fantastic. A lot of people have, you know, I've. Uh, seen reviews here on YouTube and also written ones where they say that this album goes on too long. I completely disagree. It is a long album. I believe it, it is over an hour. But, and maybe, maybe there's one song that they could have taken out, but not really. I mean, this, when I listen to this album, I want to listen to it uh, from front to back and finish with Skyfall, which is just epic. Okay. I've already talked about this and how much I love it. A lot of people also have, you know. I am pretty sure it's going to make a lot of people's best of lists for 2021. A band that is a 
criminally underrated. You know, another um, a German power metal band that um, is uh, seldom mentioned, but they are just so damn good. And this album, holy crap. Brainstorm. Ambiguity. Ambiguity, excuse me. Okay. Crush Depth. Tear Down the Walls. I mean, just really, really powerful stuff here. These guys put the put the power in power metal. They don't go much for that symphonic side. A little bit, a little bit, you know, but it's uh, mostly really heavy. Brainstorm. Over here on the American side, we would have, I could have picked any album from this band. I'm going to go with one of their early ones, Camelot. This is Karma. Just put a spotlight on that one with their original, not, not their original singer, their second singer, uh, Roy Kahn, I believe. There he is. Okay. Uh, Forever, Wings of Despair. Great stuff here. Camelot. One of my, one of my favorite bands. I do have a, an artist spotlight for those guys on this channel. Now, for this band, I know, you know, it's much more categorized in the symphonic metal genre. And I may do um, a genre spotlight for that genre as well. You know, but I believe this one has enough power metal in it to warrant and that would be Nightwish. When it comes to Nightwish it is their early stuff that can be uh, very easily fit into the power metal category. Later on they went into the much more symphonic metal. Okay, even though of course this has, you know, a bona fide opera singer here on lead vocals, uh, Tarja Turunin, but even so this is really really heavy stuff. Wishmaster, any of their their early albums, you know, with their original singer Tarja, uh, I I would really put put them in the power metal genre. With um, um, overlay of symphonic metal, of course. A couple of uh, lesser known bands here. We have a Dream Evil with uh, Evilized. You know. This could be also called just traditional metal, but fits squarely in the power metal genre as well. Uh, the song Made of Metal is just uh, fantastic. You know, cheesy as hell, without question, which is kind of something that you may say about a lot of power metal bands, you know, but I love the cheesiness. Okay. Dream Evil, Evilized, recommended, as well as... Even lesser known, I believe, would be a Nocturnal Rites here with a Shadowland. Okay, with that cover, you know, it's a very Blind Guardian-ish, right there. Invincible, Underworld, Vengeance, Birth of Chaos, really good power metal here. Nocturnal Rites. From Canada. A band that I just cannot stop talking about. I was going to feature, you know, spotlight their their latest one, which is fantastic. But I'm going to go with one of the early ones, which is Unleash the Archers. That is Demons of the Astral Waste, and yes, it is autographed right there by the lead singer Britney Slays, because I have seen that band, and their patch is right here on the back. Okay. Unleash the Archers, a really fast, the speed metal, fantastic compositions, incredible vocals. You know, this is a band that you cannot uh, categorize as the, the female-fronted uh, variety, because even though, yes, they have a female front person, uh, front woman, but but um, she belts out the, the metal as good as anyone, Okay. She's not going going for the operatic vocals. She's not going for the uh, growling either. You know, just a normal, really great mid-range uh, vocals with uh, highs when she wants them. Only the Archers, highly recommended. Great band from Canada. In my opinion, uh, the best band from Canada, current metal band from Canada. You know. Okay. Now a band that is more that borders on the hard rock side, but uh, but uh, a lot of power metal here. We have Master Plan. Okay, 
Nova Initium, I believe it is this, yes, Nova, which means new start. Reason being because they had been away for a bit and they come back here with a new lineup, okay? Fantastic. Like I said, more on the on the hard rock side, but but enough metal to call it power metal. Master plan. All of their stuff is good. Their first album is fantastic. I don't have that one. I'm probably gonna have to get that one on, on digital. Now, now let's move over to Spain here with Avalanche, El Angel Caído. Okay, I've already uh, spotlighted these guys in my Spanish metal video. Uh, great melodies, great vocals. Squarely in the power, the Spanish love power metal. All right, and here is, in my opinion, the the best Spanish power metal band, Avalanche, El Angel Caído. Really good stuff. Go now to Argentina. We cannot uh, ignore Rata Blanca here with their album and I could have picked any one of them you know the the uh, because I really like the um, all of them you know the entire catalog El Reino Olvidado the, which means the forgotten kingdom and with that title you know it's power metal okay very much uh rainbow influenced a lot of uh, Richie Blackmore isms here in the guitar playing okay this band has even collaborated with uh, Glenn Hughes Okay. Rata Blanca, great band. Okay, now for well, be, before I go with the honorable mentions here, there are two bands that I know are fantastic uh, modern power ba power metal bands that are very popular, but I have not yet delved enough into their catalog uh, to really give an opinion. The first one is Sabaton, okay, which I know I only have two Sabaton albums, which is uh, the Great War and um, a live album. And I really like them both. And the second one is uh, Power Wolf. All right. So be I don't have any Power Wolf, though I do have have heard them. Their style is a, a bit similar to to Sabaton, sometimes in the vocals and in the way they structure their songs, you know. But I am getting some uh, uh, Power Wolf uh, in the future. So now let's go with the honorable mentions. The first one will be a uh, digital purchase, and I'm going to put it over here that would be eternal champion okay and i only have one album by them which is this digital purchase and um but it's a really good you know not as good as at least the archers but uh, very good i believe they are from the united states and really good vocals uh, inventive melodies you know very catchy i really have to listen to more of that band before i can um give a, a fuller opinion and the other one because this one is is not metal at all but has enough of the power metal uh, vibe in it that i just want to showcase i have already shown this at least twice before it is a gary hughes who is the singer of the melodic band melodic rock band 10 and here with the once and future king parts one and two and of course, it is the story of King Arthur, and that itself is completely power metal. Okay, fantastic covers right there. Some metal elements here, but mostly hard rock and really great melodic hard rock. Okay, so this is The Once and Future King, parts one and two. There you go. That's it for my spotlight on a power metal uh, genre I really really love and I really hope to get more stuff from all of the bands that I've just uh, that I've just showcased okay I'm gonna keep continuing with this I think maybe the next one I'll, will be the uh, prog metal and then and then maybe the symphonic metal all right if I can gather enough bands for those for prog metal is definitely for symphonic I don't have that much but I will do a showcase for that as well. Okay, for this, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and keep rocking.